Good morning everyone. Welcome back to Vanny Orchard. If you're new to my channel, I'm Marlene. I've been busy working in the garden. I have so, so much fruit tree here in my backyard. And I try to figure out the way, how can I maintain my fruit tree and my vegetable, everything else in the garden without stressing out. So what I've been doing is I took out all the pot over here clear the area up and much now it's much easier for me like all i have to do is water once a week or twice a week depending on the weather if it's over 100 degree then i have to water twice a week and i took out my bench over here and i have my husband paint it black and i will put it where my shed is I also move all my plumeria. This is all my cutting right here. See right here is all the cutting. And what I want to do in the future is that I want to start selling them so I can earn extra money so I can buy more stuff for my garden. And now I'm going to give you a tour to my beautiful fruit forest in a small backyard garden. You're wondering, what are those noise? I live close to the freeway. It's so noisy. I try my best. Anyway, look at my mango. I am so happy. This is the first year I got mango off my tree over here on this side. And I know I'm gonna get more next year's. You see that? Look at this. I am so happy. Look at that. Yeah. And this year is pretty dry and not a lot of rain. And look at my camellia, you see, it's all burned from the heat. But luckily I have my um, plum right here, my plum tree, Santa Rosa. Give a lot of shade. So it helped my camellia not burn as bad. And you noticed, look at my Asian pear. I got some pear, not a lot. I'm happy because somehow I'm not lucky with pear because it's where I'm at is just too hot. I take whatever I can, <laughs> any pear that give me fruit any pear trees. And on this side here is my avocado tree. Same thing, because it's so hot. This is Pinkerton. You can see all this bird, the leaf is burning. And still, because of, I have the fruit tree around my backyard, not burn as bad. It survived from the heat. And on this row right here, all, all of this is gardenia on the white pot. And here's all my, my pluot, all my, and plum tree. It's finished. All of the fruits are finished. You know, I have so much problem year after year, especially these years. Let me show you that. See that big old tree right there? My neighbor tree. I think it's a fica tree. And all the birds live in that tree. 
and I have so much problem. I love the sound of birds, but at the same time, they just eat off my fruit tree, every fruit I have, and I'm so struggle with it. And also I have problem with Japanese beetle. Oh my goodness, it was so many. They eat everything, even flowers, leaves, young leaves, flowers, everything. And also worm, so much worm. And I've been collecting statue figuring for over 20 years. I like to add them in my garden because I just feel like a little whimsical, cozy, and bring the beauty to the garden. See? And this one right here is guava. And I should have, this should be ready maybe, uh, I think November. Yeah, November, I think. Even toward December on this one right here. See? And this here is bay leaf tree. show you this side see it's so it's a lot I've been thinning them this one right this guagua tree my son and my daughter gave me this for Christmas I think it's about four years ago. Yeah. See? How I love to put statue and figuring in the garden. You see that? Can you give you some idea? If you have a small garden. And what I love about plumeria, look at the flower. I have different kind of plumeria. And a lot of them is from the cutting. It's so easy to care for and don't require a lot of water. They're just like, almost like succulent. See? And right here is supposed to be my fountain. One of these days, I will get them because um, the person, his name is Ro, he, he done all my brickwork and you know, he's so busy. And I told him, one of these days, whenever you have time, I'm not rushing. And I move my roses over here from the other side because I don't have enough sun and it's required full sun. So I just move them over here. just love my big planter that's what I call 
this area right here, my big planter. And this one here is Oro Blanco grapefruit. Let's see, show you. I have one right here. There. I actually have three. I pick one, give it away, and one fall off. And look at my, oh, this apple. Look at all my mums in here. Look at that. Look at all this beautiful But There's gonna be so much flower later on. And this is blue salvia. What I learned from my experience growing flowers here where I live, it just not doing too well when it's summer. And I'm, you know, I'm not growing annual flowers because it's a lot of maintenance. You have to change them all the time and it does cost a lot of money. And I'm sticking with perennial. Only one, maybe a couple of annual flowers that I will be growing is zinnia. I love zinnia. It's a beautiful cut flower, easy to care for. And you just save your seed year after year. You don't have to buy them anymore. I have different zinnia and I've been cutting them, drying them, saving my seed. This one is lime, right here. The seedless lime. And this one here is gold nugget tangerine. This one is jasmine. See? Jasmine. And the way my design my backyard with all this fruit tree and just right here where all the fruit tree is I only had to water them twice a week and because my pot this fish style this pot right here is so beautiful and I just took all the succulent out just leave it like this so I don't have to be water them all the time and I just like the way it is See that? And right here, let me show you this. I never know. I don't know how to pronounce it. I know you can read it. Hold on. So, so that's the name. Hope you can read it. Anyway, I just love this one right here. They so beautiful. Look at how the way they drape them. See it. Show you on this side right here. Just like I said, I move my statues around all the time. 
like this one right here. I have this in the wrought iron basket where my shed, my gazebo is. And I took out and I put one over here. And one right here. She kind of crooked. I fix it later. See? See, and I have a small garden. It's not that big. And this is another plum tree right here. Sometimes I just like to sit over here in the morning or in the evening. Have my coffee in the morning. Just enjoy myself. It's just so relaxing. You see how the statue can bring so much calm beauty to your garden? Honey, mand honey mandarin tangerine and this one is jujube oh bird eating like crazy and I put this reflection it's still not working see oh my goodness yeah this is and here is my fix let's call it zebra stripe Supporte. See that? That's white supporte. For my daughter Katie, she loves white supporte. And one thing about perennial, they come back year after year, the flowers. All you do is just cut them down, they're coming back. Cut them down, they're coming back. And sometimes you have to take some out because they grow like crazy. They spread all over. See? Look at my apple. See, it looks so beautiful, like a secret garden in here. <laughs> Plumeria. See, look at the flower. It's so beautiful. And it's going to get bigger and bigger. Next year, probably double the size, even triple. 
and going so beautiful and they get bigger and more flowers and here is loquat show you it is so hot my loquat even my loquat look at the leaf is burning see that even my this is uh, another grapefruit or blanco white one super sweet and even here see it's all burning look at that This way I'm up here and you see it's a lot of ant and I have to check my fruit tree all the time Let me show you if you don't take care of it one of my tangerine that my sister gave me it died with so much and it just the whole tree nothing but ants with their eggs Let me show you you see this right here look at this that's all ant see their eggs look at that Look at right here, it's all infested. Look, see that? And I have to take care of it. I have to clean all this up. It's a lot of ant. And yeah, I feel so sad that one of my tangerine died. It was so, so sweet. And my sister gave it to me over 20 years ago. When she got married, she moved to Washington and she gave it to me. And that's a problem I have here, it's just the ant also. If I'm not stay on top of my fruit tree, I will be in trouble so also. Especially uh, they like to lay their eggs on, um, on citrus and also on pomegranate. Yeah. That's the main one. And I mean, see. And this, right? Look at my pomegranate. See that? Look at that. And normally, I know that my pomegranate be ready to pick, to eat. It's around Thanksgiving, November, and toward December. And sometimes depend on the variety also. Sometimes it's go all the way to January. You see, look, let me show you, see? Ah, oh, this right here. You see? See it? Ah, oh, this. All oh, these eggs. See that? It's so oh my god between the pomegranate and citrus it's just so much ant and you know when i know when it's fall because uh this is my camellia you see it start to the flower the bud is start to see that i know fall is coming and I love growing camellia because when it's fall and winter, everything else going to dormant, nothing grow like flowers. That's when I have my camellia giving flowers. At least bring some color to my garden. And look at this. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be a lot. And here is my pear. See? Look at that. Virginia, right here. This is more of my plumeria. It's that to flower also, you see it? Look. I don't 
don't know what color is this. It's the first time I got the flowers. Cut. A lot of my plumeria, I've been cutting them so I can have more. See all the part, you, you can see this is the cutting. Here's the cutting right here. And this is all this shoot, that new shoot. And look at that. See, a little butt right here, the flower coming out. Oh my goodness, I have a lot on here. I can't wait. See. And this is my orange, Washington navel. This one right here is another guava tree, but it doesn't give me fruit this year. I got one, let me show you. There. This is one of my favorite ones. This one is another tangerine called Dancy. I don't get a lot of fruit this year. You know, they give you a lot of fruit every other year. This year, I don't have a lot. Plumeria over here. This is all from my cutting. See? All in this part. And I'm so happy with my mango. This one I I pruned I pruned them early this year and I don't have any mango because I pruned them. And I'm just happy the way the shape of my tree now. And I will get a lot next year. Sometimes you have to sacrifice your fruit tree sometime because you want to shape them. And you know, I make it look beautiful and strong. See that? This is other guava tree right here. See this? And it's so much fruit. And I still need to thin the more of them. More. See those? Look at this. So I always have fruit almost through the years. Like if my uh, stone fruit, like my peaches, my plum and my nectarine finish, they finish around toward beginning of August, they're done. And I still have my jujube, guava. I still have figs, apples and my citrus. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Thank you.